good afternoon once again, my students. Hope you are enjoying the previous uh, discussion. I mean, the previous lesson, which was basically on the introduction of the course. After the introduction of the course, I want to take you through a new topic, which I have titled Computer Concept. And as you can see on the course outline, it happens to be the basic or the first topic after the introduction of the course. And as I indicated, I want to make this course so simple, so fundamental to the extent that the weakest student in my class can still enjoy this course. So I'm going to start with computers. We are going to start from level zero. So sit down and enjoy my class. I'm going to share my screen with you. Computer concept in a 103. And let's look at some of the objectives of this particular topic. After this topic, students who can recognize the importance of computer literacy, you can define the term computer and identify its components, explain why a computer is a powerful tool, recognize the purpose of a network, discuss the use of the internet and the World Wide Web, recognize the difference between installing and also running a, a program, identify the various types of software, describe the categories of computers, describe how the elements of an information system interact, identify the various types of computer users, and finally, discuss computer applications in, the, in your society. But because uh, I'm taking your class, that is nursing students and also med lab students, with respect to the application of computers in our society, we will be looking at the application of computers, for example, in the field of nursing or in the medical field. That is how computers or ICT are being applied or are being used in these areas. A word of computers. What is a computer or what is computer literacy? That is the knowledge and understanding of computers and their uses. So if you have someone who have knowledge in computers and how the computers works and how the, the, can, the person can also apply it or use it, you see that, that person is a computer literate. So computer literacy is basically having knowledge and understanding of computers and their uses. Now, as I speak to you, if you're able to watch or enjoy this video, then it means you are using a computer. It is either through a tablet, a phone, a desktop or a laptop. They are all forms of computers. So one can comfortably say that computers are everywhere. How is a computer defined? A computer is an electronic device which operates or which works under the control of instructions stored in its own memory. And in this case, the instructions is what we call the program or the software. So when the computer does this, it will first accept what we call data from you, the user. So the computer will first accept data such as raw fact figures and also symbol, sim, symbol, and then process this data into information. That is, the information is what is the data that, that has been organized and it is meaningful and also useful. And the data that is processed into information is finally produced or stored. So for example, if you use your computer to process data, you can either store the information on your laptop or on your computer, or sometimes produce it or print it out using a printer or display it out or output it using a projector or your computer screen. So computer accept data, they process the data into an information. So per this expansion, one can comfortably see that computer can process data using three stages. That is the input stage, the processing stage, and also the output stage. 
the stages that the computer goes through or the data goes through before it comes out as an information is what we call the information processing cycle. So it's a cycle simply because when the data is finally output, it can go back into the input stage. So it is like a cycle because an information to someone can also be an input to someone. For example, when you bought your university forms, you went to the internet to process it or to fill your details using the scratch card or the voucher that you bought from the bank or maybe from the post office or even at the university uh, end. That scratch card that was given to you, to you was an information, but you use it as an input device to access or to process your information so that the university can work on your application. When your application is finally out, it comes out that we send you an information to your phone that you, you've been given admission. So what is coming out from our end, that is from our server, becomes an information to you. You will see it as an information. The same in details, when you are going to the bank to pay your school fees, that same information will now become an input to the teller who is going to use your reference number to input it during the payment of your school fees. So this is an information processing cycle. We have the input, the processing, and also the output. But within the processing, you can have the output stage and also the storage stage. That is where you can have the storage stage when you want to store the data. And some of the, data, uh, the devices that we use or the, the device that we use to store the data is what we call the storage device. The device that we use to input the data, for example, mouse, keyboard, camera, joystick, and the rest, we call them input devices. And the device that we use to process the data is the central processing unit or the processor. And the device that we use to output the processed data from the computer or from the process unit or from the processing unit is what we call the output device. And examples of the output devices are the monitor, the printer, the projector, the plotter, there are a lot, you can name them. So for your, at your own pace or at your own leisure time, you can read about some of the input processing and output devices. You also have communication device because somehow after outputting the device, or uh, sorry, after outputting the data, you can send it. So you need a device that, you can, that can be used do the communication. And a typical example of such a device is the modem which gives us, who, who gives us network. So an input device is a hardware used to enter data and instructions. And when you look at this diagram, you can see a lot of the input devices. The card reader here is an input device, the digital camera, the microphone, the scanner, they are all examples of input. The mouse here is also an input device. The keyboard here is also an input device. And this whole here, this whole unit here is what we call the system unit, which is an example of which is a container that houses the processor, the storage, and also the memory. This is a typical example of a complete computer setup. An output device also conveys or the output or displays a process data or information to the user. And examples of such devices are the printer, the speaker, the monitor, and, the, and others. A system unit that is a bus like case containing electronic components used to process a data. And this is the system unit. When you open your system unit, I mean the desktop computer, this is what you see with some of the various components. We have the system unit. We have the power supply, the CPU, which is here. The memory, which is also here. The video card, the sound card, they are all devices within it. The two main components 
on the motherboard is the central processing unit and also the memory. And the central processing unit, also called a processor, they carries out instruction that tell the computer what to do. And the memory, that is what we normally call the RAM, that is the random access memory. They temporarily hold data or instructions for future use. So temporary holding place for data and instructions. One may say they are volatile simply because after using it by the processor and shutting down or putting your computer off, you can use it again. So the storage holds data, instruction, and information for future use. I want to talk about storage device or storage media. A storage media is a physical material on which data, instructions, and information are stored. And the device also records and retrieves items to and from a storage medium. Please take your time and understand the, the difference between a storage media and a storage device. A typical example of storage devices are the floppy disk. A floppy disk is a storage device. The hard disk is also a storage device. A compact disk drive. So when you talk about the drives and those things, here are the devices. The storage media, a typical example is your memory chip that you use. So we can have a digital, can use it for a digital camera in, in, in your phone and also in computers. What makes computer powerful? One, because of their speed, their reliability, their accuracy, they are able to store data and they, they are able to communicate with others. So you can use computer for communication. So these are some of the few things that makes computer so powerful. A network, it's a collection of computers and devices connected together. So when you have two or more computers, we call it network. When two computers come together, when you share a data or when you Bluetooth uh, uh, a data from your phone to another colleague's phone, it is also a network. You are sharing network, but this time it is in a form that we call wireless. You are connecting it without using any wire. So you can have a network that uses wire or cable and a network that do not use wire or cable. And that type of wire network is what we call the wireless. You are connected without wire. So network is basically a collection of computers and uh, devices connected together. You have communication device that's the enable connection between computers. And a typical example is the modem. The communication media are the cables, the telephone line, the cellular, ready on also the satellite. Why do we need network? We do network or we network computers or devices to share resources, to share hardware, to share software program, to share data and also information. One may ask, what is a server? A server manages the resources on a network. So on this diagram, you can see a server. So all the devices here, all the data, here, all the data that all the computers within the server or within the network is sharing, it being housed in one computer or it being housed in one com machine. And that machine is what we call a server. And all the other machine that access the server for data or for information is what we call a client. So we can have client one, client two, client three, and so on and so forth. They are all types of clients. So they all resort or they all depend on the server for their data or for their information. I want to talk about internet. Internet is an international network. That is a group of networks that are connecting globally. That is international. That is worldwide. So internet is a worldwide collection of network that connect millions of computers. So if you have a computer here, or we can have a network, all the network, all the computers that are network in Ghana here, when you connect them outside Ghana, we have internet. This is just an example that I'm giving you. One may ask, why do users access the internet? We access the internet for communication, for information. Some people also go there for shopping. We also go there for banking and for investing like the, the, the various investment networks 
the, uh, the crypto coins and others. We also have lectures online, like the one that I'm doing. We also go there for, for entertainment and also now social media for other things. What is a World Wide Web? WWW. WWW is a word, the full meaning of WWW is a World Wide Web. That is the billions of documents. That is a group of web pages that have come together. A website is a collection of related web pages. A web page contains text, graphics, sound, video, and links to other web pages. You can share information by creating a web pages or posting photos on the, on the photo community. So the difference between a website and a web page is more or less like a book. A book, the whole book is the website and the individual pages is the web page. So a web page is just a page in a website, just like a page in a book. So the, web page, the website is a collection of the related web pages. How do you install and run a computer program? A computer program or software is just a series of instructions that tells the computer what to do. So if you want to install a program, if the program is on your pen drive or maybe on your CD drive or on your compact disk, you have to insert it into the CD-ROM drive. After that, install the software by install the software program by the instructions on the disk, then run the program. The program would now execute. What is a GUI? That is graphical user interface. It allows you to interact with the software using graphics and also icons. It also controls how you enter data and how the screen also display information. What is a system software? Basically, there are two types of software. We have application software and system software. And a system software are the program that control the operation of the computer and its devices. So, a typical example of a system software is the normal operating system that we know, like the Windows, the Linux, and other types of uh, uh, operating system that you know. Operating system is a set of programs that coordinates all activities among computer hardware devices and also allows users to run application software. Utility programs are also examples of system software. So, Two quick examples of system software are operating system and also utility programs. They are also examples of system software. We also have application software. Application software are programs that perform specific tasks for users. Examples are the web processing, that's the Microsoft Word program, the Microsoft uh, Excel, that's the popularly known as spreadsheet, the database, the presentation graphic, that is PowerPoint, the, face, the Facebook, application, you can name them. All the applications that you use on the internet or you use on your computers are all application softwares because they help you to do a specific task. Mm -hmm. Zoom is an example of an application software. YouTube is an example of application mm -hmm. software. Facebook is an example of application software. Twitter is an example of application software. So you can name them Instagram and the rest. So they are all examples of application software. Who is a programmer? Programmer is someone who simply develops an application. He just writes computer instructions to direct the computer how to process data into information. So the someone who writes computer programs is what you call a programmer. Let's look at some of the categories of computers. You can have personal computers. You can have mobile computers or mobile devices. We have the mid-range servers, the mainframe computers, and also we have the supercomputers. The two most popular series of personal computers are the personal PCs and also the Apple Mac OS. This is just a complete illustration of a desktop computer that it is designed. We normally say it's desktop simply because it's normally sits on a desk. So a desktop computer is designed so, so that all of the components fit on or under a desk or on a table. A notebook computer or a lap, what we normally call laptop is also another form of computer. So portable, they are small enough to even fit on your lap as you can place a laptop on your lap. Generally, they are more expensive than a desktop. 
We also have a tablet, PC. They resemble a, a letter size slit. They allows you to write on the screen using a style of that is a, a touch screen pen. A smaller version is the modular computer. We also have other types of tablet that you have seen. There are examples of tablets. We also have the PD, that's the personal data assistance. They provide personal organizer, uh, organizer function. You can have your calendar appointment book address, book, your calculator, your notebook, your notepad. There are examples of uh, computers or handheld computers. Cybers, we have mid range server, the mainframe, and also the super server. There are examples of computers. Now, what are information system elements? When you say an element, the complete information system, people, procedure, data, software, and hardware, these five things come together to make a complete computer system. So you, the user, the procedure that you follow, the data and the software and also the hardware, they all come together to form the computer system unit. Let's look at the five categories of computer users. We can have the home user, the small office user, the mobile user, someone sitting in a train or maybe a, a plane. We also have the large business and also the power, where we have farmer working at the workstation. What software is available for a home user? Web access, entertainment, communication, also personal finance management. So these are examples of computer usage. What software is also available for a small office or home user? You have the local area network, the productivity software, specialty software, the web usage, and also the email. These are all examples of uh, uh, users. Now let's look at some of the applications of computer in our society. You can have application of computer in our education. You can apply computer in our, in our educational setting like what I'm using. I'm using computer to teach you online, apply it in finance. For example, banking, when you go to the banking industry or the various finance in, uh, 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 companies, they're using computers. The government, the government also use computer. And also healthcare, that is where my lovely nursing and also med lab students, you find yourself. Science, publishing, travel, and the various industry, they all use computers. So computer can be applied in the various industry. So for your assignment to my med lab and also my nursing student, you are going to write, or you are going to discuss five major applications of computers or ICT in your chosen field. That is, if you're a nursing student, you are going to discuss five applications of computers in nursing. If you're a med lab student, five application or usage of computers in med lab. This is your assignment. Thank you for enjoying my lesson. I'll still come again in our next lesson for the next topic. Thank you. If you have any question, you can post it on my YouTube channel. Thank you.